The other one was a ad. Oh my lord, these people are crazy. All right, next tweet. All right, let's pause. Did I see that already? Get tell Emily the Mumu to unblock me. I want to talk to her. If I say what's in my head, Twitter will get me. There's that here. Genuine question at Emily Andrews. What on earth will compel Megan to come back to the monarchy when you and your peers continue to behave in a way and to defame her so as to make her not want this? Okay, I think I read this. Framing her as an egotist who wanted to be ahead of Kate is the usual royal what usual I hate when okay there it is here framing her as an egotist who wanted to be ahead of Kate is the usual royal reporter trick ignore at all costs the ugly truth that she was a woman subjected to unprecedented character assassination within eight days by you and your peers who were often briefed and encouraged by the family to do this and brought her to suicidal ideation. Harry took her out to save his wife and uphold her well-being, not because she wanted the spotlight, which she had anyway, that was the problem. You know this, so please don't act like you know Megan and her reason, then misrepresent them. You don't know or tell, you spend. Ah, I think I covered this. Let's see here, 57 seconds. As Kathleen says, imagine what could have been right now. Yeah. We've got, you know, if they had stayed in this country. It would be like the Beatles. It would be like, exactly, sort of the, the, the second coming. And I think that, you know, we know that, well, I know that um, Meghan didn't like to be kind of second behind the princess, now Princess of Wales. Okay, I think I covered this already. One of the things that I said when I listened to this in my earlier recording, I think, is that Meghan already told them she doesn't mind being in the background. I mean, I think that knowing that I've, I've just been here for three months, right? <laughs> and in that You've amount of time, for, well, but with that said, for me, it's very important to, once you hit the ground running, even if you're doing it quietly behind the scenes, which is what I've focused my energy on thus far, is meeting with the right people, meeting with the right organizations behind the scenes quietly, learning as much as I can so that I can maximize the opportunity we have here to really make an impact. I think what's interesting is I hear a lot of people saying when speaking about girls empowerment finding and knowing their worth or women's empowerment as well you'll often hear people say well you're helping women find their voices and I fundamentally disagree with that because women don't need to find a voice they have a voice they need to feel empowered to use it and people need to be encouraged to listen okay she told the institution everything that they needed to know but instead, they went on bashing her. But for her to come and say this, you're not a good reporter. Because Megan already tackled all of this. Even if you don't remember every single thing that she said, but if you are a royal rat expert, isn't what they call these people, expert? If you are an expert, you should know all of this stuff already. You don't have to remember word by word, but making reference to some instances where Megan said certain things, you could at least make reference to that. You don't have to quote her word by word, but when all of them were on stage, Megan literally told them she doesn't mind being in the background. For me, it's very important to, once you hit the ground running, even if you're doing it quietly behind the scenes, which is what I've focused my energy on thus far, to maximize her potential, is meeting with the right people, meeting with the right organizations behind the scenes quietly, learning as much as I can so that I can maximize the opportunity we have here to really make an impact. Something like that. But to say she wanted the spotlight, and not only that, in the docu-series. And Megan was saying, you for the spotlight, for that or something like that? I remember when I was making that video about uh, terrorists, because I used the word terrorists and look it up. And one of the things that I picked was when Megan was crying and saying, uh, because they wanted the spotlight and all of this, and they're driving her crazy for that, something like that. You are making people want to kill me. It's not just a tabloid. It's not just some story. You are making me scared, right? And like that night, to be up and down in the middle of the night, looking down my hallway, like, are we safe? Are the doors locked? Is security on? Is everything? That's real. Are my babies safe? And you've created it for what? Because you're bored or because it sells your papers? or it makes you feel better about your own life. It's real what you're doing. And that's the piece I don't think people fully understand. You so all of this, she should have known. 
it's like something in their brain is missing when they have to uh, try to talk about Megan. When they don't have to talk about Megan. You know, all of them, their baggage will be coming. Because now the world is seeing all of them for who they are. And I hope if they leave the UK, they don't come into the US and be employed by any of these freaking um, uh, medias. Oh my God. All right, let's continue. She didn't, uh, there's, there's so much that's been said and done, but I think had they, but, and she was a woman, she was, she wanted to hit the ground running and a woman in a hurry, which is fantastic. Had they bided their time somewhat, which they didn't want to do and I can understand why, the now they will be absolutely front and centre of the royal family. For sure, but equally, I don't like this framing of what happened with Meghan and Harry as being Meghan and Harry's problem. Like it's a missed opportunity for Meghan and Harry and the royal family absolutely i don't think it's a missed opportunity for megan and harry okay megan and harry were there to help the institution okay they had nothing to gain from it but to help the institution and then william had so much more to gain charles had so much more to gain but instead they went on a bashing thing they thought they had it under control that's the thing. They thought they had it under control. Whoever was advising them, Charles and William, whoever was advising them, thinking they had the institution under control to go on the hate bandwagon. Okay, remember Brexit was a direction for the country. Whoever was advising those two idiots and then to shut their mouth and allow the only smartest one who was advising them with good with good advice but instead they told them out all this i'm sorry it's harry and megan they're doing their own thing all right they start from scratch now nobody can say it's the institution who helped them make them wherever you know the built multi-billion dollar industry they will create for themselves they did it on their own with their own to will their wit their wisdom their energy and their vision for what they want so the institution cannot take credit of that at all. The only thing they keep on saying about title, title, by now, Harry was willing to give it up so they could take it. That title doesn't work in the U.S. All right? So Harry and Meghan did not have any benefit for helping the institution. It's the institution who had everything to gain, but instead they threw it away. So Harry moved on and said, took his family along with him and said, let me create what I wanted to do anyway. All right, so that's that. I don't know where this guy is coming with his BS. Let me move it back slightly. For Meghan and Harry and the royal family. Absolutely. So it, was, it, yep. was, it was something which happened from both sides. Yeah. Absolutely. And it just led to this really unhappy situation. Yeah, it has. And in, in the end, with, with families, maybe you can, you can sort of forget. And them. the way they're making it sound like as if Harry did something to the institution. When in fact, it's the institution who did Harry wrong. They did Harry wrong. Like I said, he was there to help them, but they keep on inflicting pain. When it was too much, he had to move on. And even for him to move on, he did all the proper steps. All right, when, they went to, when he went to Sandrium, all right, to discuss the possibilities, the option, what, what did they do? They already had a paper uh, with all the information that, uh, uh, whatever the choice that the, uh, the firm wanted. The private secretaries began to address Granny about the five options. Your Majesty, you've seen the five options? Yes, she said. We all had. They'd been emailed to us. Five different ways of proceeding. Option one was continuance of the status quo. Meg and I don't leave. Everyone tries to go back to normal. Option five was full severance. No royal role, no working for Granny, and total loss of security. Option three was somewhere in between, a compromise, closest to what we'd originally proposed. I told everyone assembled that, above all, I was desperate to keep security. That was what worried me most, my family's physical safety. I wanted to prevent a repeat of history, another untimely death, like the one that had rocked this family to its core 23 years earlier, and from which we were still trying to recover. I'd consulted with several palace veterans people who knew the inner workings of the monarchy and its history, and they all said option three was best for all parties. Meg and I living elsewhere part of the year, continuing our work, retaining security, returning to Britain for charities, ceremonies, events. Sensible solution, these palace veterans said, and eminently doable. But the family, of course, 
pushed me to take option one. Barring that, they would only accept option five. We discussed the five options for nearly an hour. At last, the bee got up and went round the table, handing out a draft of a statement the palace would soon be releasing, announcing implementation of option five. Wait, I'm confused. You've already drafted a statement? Before any discussion? Announcing option five? In other words, the fix was in this whole time? This summit was just for show? No answer. So the firm already hand him what the, the choice was. So Heavy said he tried everything possible, but it couldn't, it couldn't happen. The decision that I have made for my wife and I to step back is not one I made lightly. It was so many months of talks after so many years of challenges. And I know I haven't always gotten it right, but as far as this goes, there really was no other option. Wait, I'm confused. You've already drafted a statement? Before any discussion? Announcing option five? In other words, the fix was in this whole time? This summit was just for show? No answer. What I want to make clear is, we're not walking away. And we certainly aren't walking away from you. Our hope was to continue serving the Queen, the Commonwealth and my military associations, but without public funding. Unfortunately, that wasn't possible. In other words, the fix was in this whole time? This summit was just for show? No answer. Unfortunately, that wasn't possible. And then the father went and then took his security away. But whatever. All right, let's continue. You can, you can sort of forget the details of it and just move on, you know, and not worry about it. Melvin e well, when you're the one who's the receiver of the pain and the inflicting of pain, you will remember. But if you're the one who's keep on throwing the, the nonsense at, uh, at the person, yeah, because you're having fun doing it, you don't think of it much, but the person who's receiving it will remember. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's read some of this. I tackle it, but I add more stuff to it. You might see this video in another, this video clip someplace else. Okay, when did Megan ever say that she resent being second to Kate at Emily Andrews, nasty at editorializing and projection? What she has publicly said is that the abuse and racism she faced here from people and your industry badly affected her mental health. Those are the facts. Okay, maybe Emily had some private chats where Megan confessed this otherwise Emily royalist sense of morality just made up for spend. Okay, I find Emily Andrews' analysis interesting that why would anyone wake up every morning to be second best to a woman who has achieved nothing all her life at Emily Andrews can have all that if she wished as to position is vacant. I'm happy Megan is alive and well away from vultures. All right. It's the indoctrinated hierarchical mindset Megan didn't try to better. She just was. That put a target on her back. The same people who say she and Harry could have globally promoted brand Britain were writing articles painting her as a witch. Okay. Wow. Jeremy Vine forget the little details. How easy is that to say? Mm -hmm, that's what I was saying. But the person who's receiving the blows will remember all of that. Forget that Megan was essentially suicidal and Charles was unmoved by the death threats she had or that William sent his aide to give evidence against her in court so she could uh, be ripped apart on a public stage. Mm -hmm, that's all of that. Baggage for God. That's all. Let's move on.